I'm Laren Lockwood. I'm here with my friend Jeff Dakin with the Scrubby Shark Tank Entrepreneur. And tell us about your product, man. Well, the product is called the Scrubby. Oh. It's a universal cleaning attachment that connects to your kitchen sink sprayers and also connects to your garden hoses. It puts the water and the sponge at the same place at the same time. So with a few twists, the sponge comes off and it's reversible and replaceable. Whoa. And then uh, flip around for your modern pull downs and then flip it around this way. And then it's good for your old school, old school style spray guns. And then it also has these threads for your garden hose. It's pretty simple. It's awesome. You should get one, the scrubby.com. We actually used it earlier on the table because there was a coffee stain and it looked terrible. This is the only table we could get. So way to go, Scrubby. <laughs> yes. It's okay. a yeah, multi-tool. Did you get a deal on Shark Tank? Everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to know, did we get a deal? There was no deal made on the Shark Tank. But after the tank, there was multiple deals that were made. And that's the thing about with being on Shark Tank, as you know, it's it's just the exposure that you get. And then the influx of connections that you make afterwards is, is the best part about it. Right. But the good thing is, is that you actually aired. There are a lot of misconceptions about the show. And people just don't know that just because you film, that you don't that doesn't mean you get to air. And so you still aired because y'all had a little bit of controversy on top of a great product, right? Yeah, we, we aired, we, we were in the tank for about an hour and they edited it down to about nine minutes. And there's a lot of good back and forth. I mean, it was it's all for entertainment purposes anyway. So they right. wanted to add some drama and add some things. But, you know, it kind of seemed like there's crazy things going on. But in the end, we're all good. You know, right. everything is everything is good. You know, it's a reality show. Yeah. People have to be entertained right. and the producers know what they're doing. So just because it looks like it went down like that on the show, it doesn't mean like that was it at all, because 45 minutes is now seven to eight. Right. And it's all about entertainment and inspiring other entrepreneurs. So on that note, did Shark Tank change your life? Yes. Simple, simple yes. question, simple answer. Right. It's, uh, we were at, we were, we only went to two trade shows. And then after our second trade show, we got a call to be on Shark Tank. Wait, wait, wait. They called you? They called me to be, oh, well, they called my partner, Matt. And then he said, Hey, you want to be on Shark Tank? I said, yes. What Absolutely. else did they say? He's like, I, he's asked me want to be on it. I was like, well, what else did they say? It's like, give me all the details. Oh, was, but so it was awesome. super exciting. And so, that was right before COVID hit and then during it. And then so we took the next, you know, six months of due diligence phases. You know, they had hundreds of pages of contracts right. and, and their so background much. checks and all their, you know, things that they had to do to get us uh, approved to be on there and check our intellectual property and make sure our patents and trademarks were solid. And, you know, right. you're the real deal. real deal. Originally, you didn't have to do all of that, though. The, you know, they wisened up. Shark Tank wisened up. They wanted to make sure that you actually had those sales or you actually had a patent. So, that, I mean, that's well, yeah, we didn't We didn't have a lot of sales going into it because we we only went to two trade shows and that was it. We didn't sell online. We didn't, we, you know, we didn't have any e-com experiences, had a good idea. And we found a manufacturer and then produced units and then put it out there, tested it, you know asked the public what they thought and we got a great response and uh, then Shark Tank called us and yes. now please. So what, a, okay, I'm a woman. What am I using this for? For, well, it's for your dishes, okay. right? And like your, your baked on food mess. If you okay. got stuff on your plate and you're spraying it and it's not coming down and it takes 15, 20 seconds of just spraying water on it, it's not coming, put it directly on there. So, oh, I, came up so with, I came up with this idea. My wife, she did all the cooking. She's a great chef, right? And then I was doing all the, the dishes. So I took the old style spray gun and I was spraying the plates. And then I actually was, you know, rubbing the plates with the spray gun to get that extra mess off. And I said, if there's just a sponge on the end of this, right. you know, that'd be super efficient. And then I created a prototype and of course it worked perfectly and then right but so, it, and it's for men too because they you can use it outside you can use it, it outside not all for, men do the dishes not yeah, all women do but cleans coolers and you know in your windows on your house you know built up 
dirt and grime on your When we're talking about doing the dishes, it really is like I'm, I spray it and then I have to pick up the scrub. And so this is so convenient and it's yeah. going to cut and down a lot with, time. And a lot of other sponge or a lot of other sponges on the market, you actually have to use your hands and, and get your hands wet. This you can use hot water, you know, without, you know, worrying about burning yourself or, or cold water. It just, you know, direct access and so it saves water and saves time by the, like the physics <laughs> of actually putting a water and sponge at the same place at the same time and uh, it works really well what was your job before shark tank i it was a general contractor i built uh, uh built homes and we also built senior living homes and apartment complexes and and hotels and we traveled around the nation and i hired crews of guys to to facilitate builds of commercial properties. Mostly. Do you think that translates into being an entrepreneur? Hundred percent. So I started off as a general contractor twenty years ago, and I was actually a trim carpenter. And then I, you know, figured out how you know to measure properly and cut properly. And then I got too many projects to handle myself. I started subcontracting them out, and and then it got to a point where you know I needed to find an electrician or a plumber or you know paint guy. And so that translated into the invention world of needing to find a manufacturer, uh, right. engineer for design and, and you know, the, following the steps of the process or order of operation is important. And if you could figure that out, then you can replicate the steps and, uh, and then, you know, Right, it's it like problem solving. Yeah. That's what entrepreneurship is really about and planning and being able to source things because eventually you can't do it all by yourself. And that's, I tried that for the longest and people were like, what are you doing? Like even on Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful was like, um, you can't do this all by yourself. I'm like, clearly I know that. I, that's why I'm here, okay? Put your hearing aids Right, in. put your hearing aids in. Just listen to what I'm trying to tell you, Mr. Wonderful, okay? But I did all of that by myself, but I was an art teacher first. So I drew my plans, I drew my CADs, nice. and I knew the colors that worked together. I knew the most popular colors, and um, then I'm a problem solver. So I solved my own problem because I couldn't find a place to store my rings on the go. I drew it, I 3D printed it, and now I full-time mass produce it, and it's injection molded. So yeah. it's like really cool awesome. to be able to bring your old job into your new job of right. being an entrepreneur. So do you miss your old job? No, <laughs> no, no I mean, not really. No, I mean, you know, it's, if it's about, you know, money and things, it's, it's about happiness. It's about the Absolutely. journey. You know, it's a lot of time maybe away from family, but also, you know, kind of ha having all these different crews of guys doing things. And so it's, it's maybe more stressful as an in inventor entrepreneur, Absolutely. but you're enjoying it more for some right. reason because you're actually, you know, it's a passion and, and you know, people love the product, and we have other patents on on other inventions right now. So it's it's opened up a whole new world. Right. You, right. Once you learn how to do one thing, you can continue to learn how to create more things. Right. And that's what's really fun. Whenever we all get to hang out together, Shark Tank entrepreneurs, is that we're constantly bouncing ideas off of each other. Or what do you think about this? Or even our connections. Do you know somebody that can help with this? So that's another wonderful thing about Shark Tank is that we all found each other. And as an art teacher, I didn't know anyone like me in the middle of the country. Right. Where are you from? Kansas. How many inventors do you have in Kansas? <laughs> I don't <laughs> know any of them. I was part of an inventor invention society and they were all aspiring inventors. Okay. And I was already had some patents where I was working. I was just trying to line up connections. And then it brought us to, you know, start traveling and meeting our manufacturers in China and different. So it's yeah. just connecting dots. And now we have the United Inventors Association where you can sign up for free and join. And then you have access to all kinds of Shark Tank entrepreneurs, patent attorneys. We've got manufacturing experts. So it's like it's a good place to be and it's free. And we're here together because of it. So we get an excuse to hang out and come up with more ideas and try to help other entrepreneurs, too. Do you have a favorite business quote? There's a lot of them. that's a good question. Do I have a favorite business one. Um, I'd say that uh, anything is possible if you put your, you know, dedicate time to it and maybe not anything because just do some due diligence, research it, try to, I mean, it, it could go deep, but it's, if you try to stop yourself from doing it, like on Google and different things, and yeah. it's, 
once you get to a point of where it's possible and it's like, okay, this is actually, you know, functional, you know, good idea, then you're only, you're, you're your own worst enemy in a sense, right? It's like, if you want to, oh, yeah. if you put all into it and say, we could do it, you know, you can always find excuses, but you know, but in the right. end, it's all your, it's all up to you. It is. And you got to have grit, but it's also like, you have an idea you have to research does it already exist right. first of all or and if it does if, is it a good product yeah, i try to say you got to shut try to shut yourself down you google it and find exactly what your product is oh, or, I like that. or exactly what you're trying to do and if you find it then you know someone's already beat you to the market but if it's not and then you're, you know take the next steps and maybe you know talk to a patent attorney and do a professional patent search and if they don't find anything then you go provisional patent and then after that, you could do a utility patent or patent pending. And, That's exactly what um, I did. Right. All right, entrepreneur journeys. Yay. And it worked because with Lion Latch, I couldn't find anything that wasn't a pill container that unscrewed. And so I came up with this design. With I used the carabiner from the Dollar Tree. And I came up with a design that that stem was going to be coupled to the base. So I would have to physically remove that carabiner. Well, that was a D-ring and it was ugly. And I wanted something that kind of matched the shape and the design sure, of it. Yeah. So I That's custom made this carabiner too. Elegant. Thank you. But I got some feedback from people that also told me the D-ring was ugly. So I had to listen to them and they were right. 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 <laughs> and my product's better because of it. Right. We're like nailing it. Okay. Do you ever take your wedding ring off? Yes. Where do you put it? In a lion latch. Yes, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so true. He's he's a smart man. Hey, we can ask that question again. I get more get more uh, okay. animated about it. Okay, I'm like, where do I look? Okay, I have another question. What's the question? Do you ever take your ring off? Sometimes. When? You got this. In when I'm going to the gym or working out or doing something, but I always, 100 percent of the time. Put it in a line latch. Yes, because it's the smart thing to <laughs> it's do. A smart thing you're to a do. smart man. What about when you're cleaning deer? I put it in a line latch because sometimes sometimes you gotta get, you know, your hands bloody <laughs> in there and they're kind of cutting the guts out. Right. You know, you gotta and this is gonna be like beep, 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 <laughs> explicit. It's like you're <laughs> but, <laughs> where this is gonna be good footage on TikTok. We're gonna be like, you do what? what? Right? Earlier, Kelly was talking about feeding her parrot meat. <laughs> we were like, what? what? <laughs> or veggies or whatever. And we were, was, she was like, chicken? she was like, don't include that. I don't want <laughs> <laughs> But Kelly had parrots. I discovered that about That's her. That's cool. All right. Are you ready for some like personal questions that are fun? They're sure. not invasive. Whatever okay? you need. All right. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. What's your favorite animal? Favorite animal would probably be a, that's a great question. I think uh, horses are cool. I like horses. That's awesome. But you have a few horses, I right? I do have a few horses. They're beautiful. Country boy. Hey, guess my favorite animal. A lion? It's a lion. Surprise. Did you know I do my eye makeup like a lion? Oh, I can tell. Thanks. People ask me all the time. But now you know, right? No, I was sense. wondering. I was wondering. White eyeliner, okay. right? Little gold glitter. Okay, that's cool. Yes. I'm a, I'm a fancy lion. Uh, nice. Okay, right? What's your favorite color? Uh, blue. Are you going to make a blue scrubby? going to be all blue? Yeah, we'd probably do all different types of colors. Right now it's kind of industrial, but we'd like to do right. a blue, maybe a pink, maybe some purples, maybe a fuchsia or a mauve or, yeah. you know. Well, whatever women like. Right, whatever right? they like. They, they, they know, I'm telling you, we know the colors. We know the popular colors. Sure. And you know who to call, the art teacher. The okay. art lady, I sure. can help you. What right. color do you think? Um, mm, I would okay. go with gray. Okay. A lot of people like the neutrals. Yeah, Okay. Right. Black is okay, but you're right, it looks industrial. Okay. But gray is always a good seller for me. Mint and gray are my best selling colors. Neutral, gray. Men like it, women like it. There Speaks you go. to everybody. I like gray. Right? Um, what's your favorite food? I would say Thai food. What? I love Thai. I was not expecting that. Yeah, some pad thai or some yeah. Really? I love Thai food. You wanna guess mine? Mexican food. No, it's chicken and dumplings. Oh. From scratch. <laughs> okay. I'm more country than you are. All right, right on. <laughs> right on. Like, yes. Yeah, so where is your favorite vacation spot? Ooh. Well, Kauai. Really? Kauai, Hawaii. Yes. Beautiful. Hawaii is the best, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But when you only have a couple of days, you can't take a whole week to go somewhere. Where do you go? I go out to my family's hunting land and I play in the woods. Right. 
Isn't that nice? Do you unplug when you're there? Uh, yeah, there's no service. Oh my God. So we got, All of us. Yeah, we have four wheelers. We take on trails and we got a Jeep and just go through the woods. Right. And, and you just have some nostalgia when you were a kiddo? Just sure. free? Yeah. You didn't have to worry about your next product? That's right. <laughs> That's what Kelly said too. She was like, I like going home and just disconnecting or where I don't have service. Sure. Me too. I'm like that with my grandma. What's your favorite sports team? The Chiefs. What? I'm from Kansas okay, and they're true. also Super Bowl champions good. multiple years in a row. With Mahomes a, is awesome. With a Texan quarterback? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's from t Texas, but he's now in Kansas because he right. realized <laughs> no, that's, where, that's where he needs to be. <laughs> that's good. A lot I mean, of good people are in Kansas. Do you have a favorite pair of shoes? Favorite pair of shoes. <laughs> um, well, these boots are pretty comfortable. They're they're suede. What brand are they? Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, do not buy your boots on Amazon. Go to the boot store and. Oh buy well, them. I do got some uh, Ariats that are pretty good. I got some Ariats and I got some Tagovas. I got some good ones, man. All right, that was awesome. Thanks for being on the show, Jeff. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Larry. Hi, I'm Laren Lockwood. I'm the inventor of the Lion Latch. I invented it to store small jewelry on the go, but it can hold any tiny valuables you have that you don't want to lose in your purse or your pocket. And the reason the Lion Latch is unique, it's not a screw top lid. It comes with this carabiner ring that you actually have to remove first in order to be able to pull the lid off. So now your rings, your earrings, your tiny valuables, your vitamins, supplements, anything you don't wanna lose in your purse or pocket can go inside. You're gonna latch the carabiner on and now you can attach it to your keys or something larger like your purse or your water bottle so you know where your tiny valuables always are. 